joining us for this week's episode of Trade the Chain. Um, we have a, a new addition to the cast today and a few dropouts from the cast. Um, that's because it is the dog days of summer. And we have Ryan and Monty who are either crashing weddings or taking their last weekend vacation before having to actually go back to work. Uh, we do have CJ joining us from Chicago, crypto analyst over at Market Rebellion. And we have a special guest today. We have Rob from Digital Asset News uh, joining us from the great state of Texas, where I'm sure it's hotter than hell. And uh, he looks like he has a pool, so it's okay. Um, Rob, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. Last minute edition. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you definitely have a job, so uh, <laughs> all good. Um, you know, folks, today's going to be an interesting episode. We have, uh, particularly in our hot or not list, um, we have a, a ticker that you may not know. Um, we're going to run through it. Uh, and as usual, we have, um, we actually have one that was on the, on the not list, but it's kind of moved to a neutral over the last uh, 48, 72 hours um, since we decided to put it on the show. And then lastly, we'll have a chat about Fidelity's new fund that, they, uh, that they're launching uh, aimed at institutional investors uh, with $100,000 buy-ins and trying to get some, uh, some captive audience members to invest in that. But first, we're going to go to the markets. We have CJ, who's going to hit us up with a little tech, uh, technical analysis on uh, BTC and ETH. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on the show. It's great to be here with you and Rob. So uh, yeah, let's get into the charts. The charts. The charts. <laughs> the charts can be scary sometimes. <laughs> well, thank God CJ's here because he's the smart one. I, I need him to break this all down for me. All right. <laughs> so last week I talked a little bit about how it was nice on this green five candle, the fact that we actually closed above the prior candle high from our last high of around uh, 11.5 at roughly July 1st. Um, we're still just barely above that on the weekly. We've got two days more to go before this candle closes. But I, ideally, I would really like to see us above here uh, continuing to make higher highs as the bullish momentum continues. I think if we're not able to do that, it's not really a good uh, sign for the bulls, especially considering we are already at a six of nine on sequential. Um, and luckily, you know, moving averages are looking beautiful right below. But let's check out a shorter term time frame on the daily. Let me make this big so you guys can see. It. So last week, again, I talked about a little bit how we kind of were rejected at 12.4 and then came back into this green box, which is really acting at this point as a no trade zone after we had a bullish engulfing candle that shot us up a thousand dollars in one day from 10k to 11k ever since we've just kind of consolidated and within the last week we've had a lot of bearish momentum we've now reached a red nine on sequential and when you reach nines in td sequential that is typically an indication to that the trend is getting overbought in this case it is a bearish trend um, so we'll probably see a one to four candle correction of the bullish sort going into next week. Um, same thing though, like the reason why this indicator was created by Tom DeMarc was because he was a, a hedge fund manager who had significant size. He, his trades were about a hundred million dollars. So he needed a really good way to be able to um, buy or, or buy into weakness and sell into strength. So essentially these are nice uh, trend turning points. Um, now, while the weakness could continue, you know, I don't see us going below this 50 period moving average. Um, and uh, you know, we just gotta see what we're gonna do because we're still in this no trade zone, but I am gonna remain bullish neutral for the overall trend. I mean, the no trade zone, we've been, we've been in it for, uh, for a little while now. Um, is there, let's say, uh, a calendar time period where you're looking to see whether we have an up or down movement and get out of this sideways market? Is it going into fall? Is it going into holidays? I don't see the time frame being that significant. 
Um, I see it with catalysts on sequential nines. Um, we just had one. So I'm thinking next week will probably be a pretty significant week considering we just finished a sequential count when it comes to the technicals. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting some volatility next week, but we could continue to consolidate just as easily. Um, and are you feeling, are you feeling rather comfortable? You know, I mean, we've been uh, between that 11-7, uh, 11-1 zone, um, uh, you know, pretty uh, consistently. Are, are you comfortable for, for us staying in that zone in the short term? Yeah, I think there's very strong support as well here at the 128 period moving average. Um, but I don't see us going below this 50 period moving average anytime soon. Um, we're already showing that we're pretty oversold based on sequential and that we're likely to get kind of a bullish rebound. Um, I think it's possible that we could test it. I don't think it's likely, but I think we will keep going out after reaching the sequential nine. All right, very cool. What are we showing on the Ethereum? I mean, Ethereum dipped below the 400, uh, went down. Um, it's worked itself back up uh, to, to about the 391 range. Um, you know, it's, it's, it still has momentum. Uh, what are the signals looking like on that? So yeah, very similar to Bitcoin here, reaching the red sequential nine just a couple days ago. And, you know, we're seeing a nice doji candle and then a nice bounce off of it, which is promising. However, we're still on a red two count. Um, we got nice strong support at the 50 period moving average here as well from the previous sequential nine setup trend line. So there's very strong support here at around 340. Uh, I, we may correct to that, uh, but that being said, very similar to Bitcoin in the sense that we just went through a red one to nine candle correction. And so I feel as if the bulls are kind of due to step in here and test some of these upward resistance levels. The first one being at, five, uh, at 400, second being at 420, and then 450. Um, so I'm looking for those levels going forward if we are able to hold support here at the 50 period moving average. Well, that, I mean, that's good news for folks. Uh, you know, you slipped, you said 500. I, I thought we were getting oh, news on oh. tip there. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take 500, no problem. Absolutely, 100%. Um, all right, yeah, no, the, the, you know, the momentum's still looking strong in Ethereum. It, it's really just outperformed so well this year. Uh, okay, so we're going to go into our hot or not tickers of the week, um, and we have three on deck for today. One is going to be, the first one's going to be a hot ticker, but we, you know, not everybody's going to have heard of it. It's UMA, uh, Universal Market Access. Um, and the reason this made our list and, and got on our radar was because the price action on, on this coin has just gone through the roof. It, it's relatively new. I believe it's uh, it's an issuance from May, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it has just hockey stick to the high side. And, and I really just, I, I wanted to find out why. So uh, CJ, I mean, what can you tell us about UMA and, and what's going on over there? It's very interesting because there really aren't many exchanges. You know, the main place that people are getting this is just from Uniswap. Um, but that, me, that leads me, me to believe that a lot of insiders were behind this pump. Uh, I mean, the technicals did give you a nice entry point at this green two, closing above the previous green one on the four hour at least. Um, you had something a little bit similar on the daily, but the reason why I'm not so crazy about this coin anymore is this four hour chart. Um, this looks like a textbook top in the sense that we've went through our green one to nine candle phase uh, we topped on the wick of the eight, and now we had a doji nine and are reversing. So I wouldn't want to be holding this. Like I would take profit. Um, there's so much bullish momentum and just mania in coins like Comp, Maker, um, anything in the DeFi space at this point. So this coin could go up 100, 200% next week. Um, we don't know for certain, but the fact that it is on a technical red or uh, green nine and is technically overbought, I'm not really interested in buying it from a short-term trading perspective. Interesting. I mean, uh, it, it just goes to show how, how these things launch and, and what drives price action. Uh, Rob, I, I mean, judge, judging from CJ's uh, remarks, I hope, I hope you don't have any in your bag. 
I got none because this is, first of all, this is the first time I actually heard about it. And when I looked at, at CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, I'm like, it's at 35, it's number 35. Are you kidding me? So this thing came out of nowhere. Like, like what, two weeks ago, had anybody heard about this one? A month ago, anybody heard about it? So what CJ just said, you know, about, you know, whales pumping or, you know, this is an insider job, it's, it has to be. Because when I was looking at it, I'm like, well, first of all, I always look at what does this coin do? I don't understand what it does. You know, does it, does it really have like a real use case? So I'm taking a look at the umaproject.org and I'm taking, and I'm like, okay. So it's all about derivatives. You can make your own synthetic coin. You can have your own smart contract. It has its own Oracle. So it can do all these things just like how you would have like an Ethereum and a chain link kind of put together. You, uh, that's what it sounds like UMA does. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, if it's doing its own Oracle and, and, and it has only one, one point, one type of data point that it reaches out to to pull out whatever data it is, what about these, these multi points? Because that's the whole point of chain link, right? To get multiple points so that there's no failure. So I'm looking at that, I'm like, okay, that's one thing. And then when I take a look at, well, how do I actually create the, these tokens? Well, it's like, well, you can create your own smart contracts. And I'm looking at them like, how far ahead is this coin actually doing? And I'm like, can we actually have a real use case right now? I mean, I, I get it for the, the, for the DeFi and how it can change things, but I just don't think it's there. I mean, for me, like I need to look at something and go, okay, what do you do? What are you doing right now? And can you actually do something? And for this one, I'm just like, I don't get it. So I would pass just like what CJ said. He's like, I don't like the, uh, the, the short term look of it. I don't either. Yeah, you know, and, and that's, that's great. That's a great perspective on two sides of this, right? So we have CJ giving the technicals on and what the market's uh, looking like it's going to do. Uh, we have Rob coming in from a, a project standpoint and, and saying, hey, what are the justified use cases for this? Does it add any value into society at all? Um, and, and both are a pass. Um, interesting. That was our hot one for the week. Uh, the next one we're going to go to is a not ticker for the week, and it is IOTA. So IOTA's had a bunch of um, different changes going on. Uh, they just launched uh, Chrysalis Phase 1 um, to increase transactions to 1,000 transactions per second on its network. Um, which is a, a positive uh, uh, stake. I mean, they are coming off from the beginning of the year with a, a, a network being down and, and so forth. But, um, you know, their, their stock, their, their ticker actually uh, had some good pump and momentum to it. Um, now it's, it's, it's falling off a little. Uh, CJ, what can you tell us about IOTA? Yeah, so let's just start from the weekly chart. Um, nice run up. Nice healthy correction after reaching this green nine a few weeks back. And now we're on a green eight, but it's not like a linear set of candles. You know, um, the six is the peak and the eight is not. And in sequential theory, when you reach a nine, typically you want it to be in like a linear set. So each candle is pretty similar to the previous one um, and they look the same. And the nine is actually the peak. Uh, and that is pretty characteristic of a reversal. However, when you get a nine and it's not the peak, then that is typically indicative of the trend continuing in that direction. So if we get a nine next week that is not at the peak of the trend, then there's a definite possibility that we could continue to go higher after a pretty healthy correction on the weekly six. So that's what I see from the uh, longer term perspective. Um, just looking at kind of the shorter term, I like the four hour, the fact that we've had enough strength to just flush break through the 200 period moving average. Um, but from a daily perspective, you know, we had a nice uptrend, as I mentioned, we ran all the way up to a green nine on the daily chart and we bounced off support at the 50 period moving average. Now we're still on a red five and we might have a few more days next week of bearish to neutral price action. Um, but I have to say this hammer candle and this nice support off the 50 period moving average is promising to see if you're holding this coin. Um, from a short term perspective, I'm not getting any signals to enter or to go long if I were to trade it. But if you're a long term holder and you believe in the project of IOTA, like, I don't see this as a, a major reason to sell today. Um, so. All right, very cool. Uh, Rob, any, any thoughts on IOTA from a, from a project or technical standpoint at all? Well, first of all, let, let me go back to when, when me and CJ were talking about <clears throat> UMA. 
uh, so, so we both are going to pass, right? Next week, it'll probably blow up to like 200%. And be like those two guys were morons. I can't believe they missed it. So that that is the that is the uh, first thing. But IOTA actually, I had invested in this. I mean, back in 2017, early 2018. This is back when it was like three dollars. Because when you look at like transactions per second, which we talked about you know, on the show uh, before the show started, I mean, it's massive, right? It is not. It is. It is a distributed ledger technology, but it's. Um, directed acrylic graph, a DAG, it, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a blockchain. So, I mean, transactions per second, if you're looking at like how fast can you go, what is it up to now, like 1,000, 1,500, somewhere around there? A so if you look, yeah, if you look at that, I mean, that's, that's not on par with, I mean, Visa says what it can do, what it can do, right? Uh, 1,500, same 2,000. But with this one, it looks like it can kind of do the same thing. So if you look at that, you're like, okay, well, I like that part. And what CJ said about that was like, if you're a long-term holder, because that's pretty much like, I can see CJ does like the, you know, I, I have entry points, I'm going to trade for a little bit, and I'm going to get out, maybe yes, some long term types of things. But when I look at projects, I'm like, where is this going to be in a year, in three years, in five years? So for this one, if I had to say, if someone had a gun in my head, and say, are you going to invest into this? I, I don't know, it would probably be like my dark horse to maybe be that one because of that tangle. But for right now, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really think I could actually get into it, but it does look promising what it has. I just don't know if the partnerships are there. I mean, they have BMW, right? Or no, Jaguar. Jaguar Land Rover, yeah. Yeah, and they have a, a couple other things and it looks pretty good about, but it was weird about how they actually track things and, and energy output and reusable energy sources uh, from, their, from, their, from their building that they have in, uh, what was that, in Sweden, someplace in Europe? and how they'd actually put the energy into the car and how they could track everything. I'm like, that's fantastic. But can you, can you do that? Can you extrapolate that to other industries and do it all across the globe? I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good point. But, but again, you know, uh, different from the UMA uh, story where there really doesn't seem to be one, at least IOTA is, is pushing forth with use cases, uh, like the example you mentioned. Um, and, and Tangle is an interesting uh, uh, piece of their uh, project, uh, really is. Um, all right, we're going to go on to the next one. And the next one, it's third week on our list, and it's Link. Um, this was a not when it got, when we decided to select it for this week. But I've moved it more towards a neutral, which is not really one of the choices of the show. It's either hot or not. Um, but the reason I moved to neutral is because when we were going to run with, uh, with Link, it was trading around the 13 mark, down off its uh, $20 high, but now it's rebounded into the $15 range. Um, I, you know, it, it's like the little engine that couldn't, it just won't give up. Um, CJ, what are we looking at with Link? I mean, it, it, the momentum, or at least the hype is still there, and it's talked about frequently. It's three weeks on our show. Um, what are we looking at? Yeah, so I agree with you. I think Link has a very strong community and a lot of people who are really enthusiastic about the project. Uh, from a technical standpoint, you know, we have, well, I guess not from a technical standpoint, but we have Dave Portnoy, you know, pumping Link and getting it a lot more into the mainstream as a major coin, which is really cool and promising for long-term holders. However, uh, we have had this correction ever since we topped on the green eight. And I'm actually kind of bullish. I'm more bullish right now on this coin than bearish because it's actually had a very nice correction phase. I mean, you can see it went to that red eight and, you know, price flipped. We're still kind of in this neutral area trying to find a consolidation range. Um, we have support levels like uh, right here at about 12 left over from the previous nine, as well as the 50 period moving average about 11. So I think at the very worst, we will correct to that, to there, to those levels. Um, but I don't, I see us going back up after that. And one chart and another altcoin that looks very similar to this, but this coin is like, it's, it's very similar in the cycle, but it's gone on for, it's a little bit ahead of Link. So I, you'll see what I mean. Um, so VGX, we had a nice run up and another top here. And after kind of consolidating on its main support level and bouncing off the 50 period moving average, you can see that while it is kind of neutral, it's starting to create a new lower, uh, higher low 
and it's moving back up. So I can see Link following in a similar pattern once it goes uh, and really kind of finishes this correction period. All right, so I mean, that's still good news for, uh, for the folks either have recently gotten into it or are looking to gain new all-time highs. I mean, Rob, this has always been on, uh, uh, you know, on the edge of your conversations around your shows. You've mentioned Link a lot, you brought it up a lot. It's hot, you know, it's hard not to. Um, where, what are your thoughts at this point in the journey with it? A lot. Well, like what, what CJ said, that's always good because when, when the technicals align with, with, with some fundamentals, I kind of like to see those two things merge together. So for me and my channel, like you will have people who, a lot of people love it, right? There's, there's always a spectrum. And on one side, it's like, this is a scam coin. This is made by one guy and everybody is, is, just, is just all about it. And then on the other side, it's like, just making money. I don't really care. And there's always some place in the middle. I always look at Chainlink as this. First of all, how many partnerships do they have? I mean, there's a ton of them out there, right? And it's being used all over the place as far as decentralized finance. It doesn't matter if, if DeFi really, you know, if, if one project works or not, that Oracle is going to be in there and it's going to be Chainlink. Now, there's others that are out there, like what's it called, Band or something like that? I always forget the name. It starts with B. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So I always look at, Oracle, or at, at, at Chainlink as kind of like the gold rush in the 1800s. When all those speculators rushed out to, to California, uh, those guys didn't make the money. It was all the people that set up shop and go, hey, we can, we can sell you pickaxes, we can sell you plates, we can sell you these screens, whatever else. Those are the ones that made the money. And I think Chainlink is one of those people like, hey, if the DeFi doesn't work you know, in, in the long run, you got to use an Oracle and you got to use a lot of it. So just here it is. And we have everything packaged and it's good to go. So for me, like I bought it back when it was like two, three dollars and I just let it go, let it ride. Nice. Well, I, it, it's interesting. I, I think I was, uh, I was just completely backwards on the picks for this week. Uh, just to recap, UMA started off as a hot ticker for us. Uh, looks like CJ and Rob just, just pounded it and, and it's gonna be looking like a not ticker. We have IOTA, which was a not, I'd say that's more of the neutral category right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and then we have Link, which started off as a not ticker, but I mean, from the technicals and the, you know, the, the DeFi space uh, momentum, I mean, I, I think it's just hot as, as it's always been, right? So interesting stuff. All right, well, we're gonna go to um, our last segment of the, of the show this week, and that's gonna be um, some trading news. And what's really popped up that's interesting uh, in the news cycle this week is Fidelity's launch of a, uh, of a Bitcoin fund with a $100,000 minimum subscription aimed at its high net worth and or institutional investors over at Fidelity. Um, I think this is a bold move uh, it, it's, you know, being in the, in the hedge fund space, um, for so long in this arena, you know, I mean, to have a hundred thousand dollars subscription minimum is a bold move. Uh, you, you know, it's hard to do that with a small market cap. Um, but guys, I, I want to get your, your views on what you think this means in the short term and just in the space in the long term. I mean, it's just a huge announcement in my opinion. Go ahead, CJ. CJ, it's all you, buddy. <laughs> the brains talks. What? Yeah, so this is one of those things that uh, it's just another step towards like institutional investors not only becoming interested, but seeing Bitcoin as a reasonable investment. Like when we have PTJ and a lot of others telling that they're going to or they are invested in Bitcoin, it really wakes these institutions such as Fidelity up. And uh, the fact that they're going to offer this, it's really nice because there are people who want more legitimate, more safe vehicles to be able to invest in Bitcoin. And targeting high net worth individuals um, with $100,000 minimum, I think is a very interesting move. And if the demand is there, then I think it's going to be very exciting. And, and it's interesting because, you know, listen, it, it's a it's a bold announcement. We're, we're all seeing it because it's Fidelity's name behind it. Um, you know, we do have other players currently in this space with similar products and 
including uh, Grayscale with their uh, Bitcoin Trust, um, as well as uh, NYDIG, uh, um, which uh, just raised $160 million uh, from institutional players for their fund, uh, as well as Pantera, who in their uh, SEC filings, uh, showed that they uh, had gotten $190 million. So, um, you know, the fact that Ellie's name is behind it, I, I think is putting it in the limelight. But, um, you know, Rob, what, what are your thoughts on the news? I mean, I thought it's great. I mean, just like, just like both of what you said. But the big thing for me is when we look at these big institutions and they, and they can talk a good game, right? They can come on and say, you know, we, we, we like this, we like this. But behind the scenes, what are they doing? So it's not... It's not what you say, it is what you do. So this is in you know, a 48 hour time span. Uh, they had come out and they had put out there, it was a Bitcoin investment thesis. And I don't know if you read it, but it's great. It, it just talks about how, how Bitcoin you know, is going to go to potentially a million. I mean, agreeing with that stock to flow uh, from plan B, it talks about um, just you know, how it is did, yeah, did, digital did, gold. Did they hire McAfee as an analyst? Oh, let me tell you about McAfee. No, I don't, I, I don't want to get into it, but that guy. You can. I have no problem going that direction. Okay, well, okay. I'm, I'm going to go off on that tangent, but I'm going to come back. That guy is one of the reasons why I actually got into cryptocurrency digital assets. Because remember when he was talking about 2017? He's like, look, it's going to go to a million. It's, it's just inevitable. It's just math. You'd be stupid not to do it. I was like, you know what? That sounds good. I remember buying McAfee on my crappy PC when I was a kid. So I was like, you know what? That guy, he's. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then, so then later he comes out. He's like, "Ah, you're all morons." I just was. I just wanted to get y'all in there. I'm like, "This son of a." And I, I couldn't. Not that I couldn't believe it, but I kind of believe it, especially when I see him. What's what's going on now with his with his ghost project? He's like, "I'm leaving. It's trash." Yeah. And then, then he comes back. He's like, "Well, I'm not really leaving, but I'm kind of leaving." You know what? You he, he can't trust that guy. Anyhow, no. so, so 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 that 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 is the the one tangent. But but coming back to, to fidelity. It's not what you say, it's what you do. So they, they, they put up this great report. They talk about how great it is. It is, it is uh, you know, digital gold. It's going to be fantastic. And then you know, a day later, they come on and they say, just like we're talking about now, we're going to do a Bitcoin fund. We're going to you know, ha- let it have legs. We're going to invest heavily into it. And Fidelity's got how much assets under management? Like $7 trillion, $8 trillion, something like that? Yeah. So if we're talking about this, this, this generational wealth transfer, you know, going from, from one set to another set, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity. When I, when I saw this, I sent this to my friends. Remember, you know, all my, we're in our 40s now, 50s, something like that. So like when I, just like what CJ said, when you give a name like Fidelity or Paul Tudor Jones or some of these big institutions, like, wait, 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 they're getting into it? Well, maybe I should get into it. And that is the best marketing play you can do. It's just, it is, um, there's just something behind it now. And I mean, not that it hasn't been before, but this is, I think, a big thing. Hopefully, it'll be something you know bigger as it moves on. But this is why I invest heavily into Bitcoin. That and what Alex told me before, because of all his institutional investors, I go, "Hey, man, what are they talking about?" He's like, "You know what? It's all Bitcoin. <laughs> it's all Bitcoin." So I'm like, "Okay, it's all Bitcoin. yeah." And 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 I know people are gonna say Bitcoin is a Netscape navigator of of uh, you know the technology. You know, get a Google Chrome or get a Brave browser. I'm like, you know what? But you first had to have. Uh, Netscape Navigator to get to the next step, and that's where I see Bitcoin. What are uh, what are your views on Tomato Coin? <laughs> Listen, Tomato Coin is putting the marinara. To, it's putting today's marinara sauce on the blockchain tomorrow. So that's <laughs> why I have to get into Tomato Coin. CJ, if you don't know on my channel, I always because people have always said, "Hey, have you have you heard about um, you know UMA? Have you heard about IOTA?" And they just give me like all these different things, and I'm like, you know what? It's it, when you guys are talking to me about this thing, it's almost like you're saying, have you heard about tomato coin or potato foot coin? I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea. So all these things, when, when they, they tell me to ch- check one thing out, I'm like, have you seen tomato coin? You know how big it's going to be? <laughs> yeah, it's on, the, uh, it's on the Olive Garden blockchain. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, to your point, will Fidelity uh, six months down the road or 12 months down the road still have this thing? Or is this just publicity? I mean, who never, I guess you got, you have to follow through, right? You, well, you got to follow through. But remember back in 2018, 2018, 2017, who, somebody who, I think it was a CEO said that they are mining Bitcoin. Fidelity is doing it. And I talked about this. So I'm like, if you got these big institutions going, you know what, we're this heavy into Bitcoin. No one's doing that for other stuff. So I just yeah. want to look at what they're doing, not what they're saying. And that's a big indicator for me of where to go. I like to follow smart money. So if CJ says something, I'm, like, I'm going to probably listen to CJ. Alex says something, I'll probably listen to Alex. 
you, no, you do the uh, the best in, the best investment uh, uh, trend you can follow is do exactly the opposite of everything <laughs> I do because you will make so much money. That's why you're sitting in front of a pool and I'm not. Uh, um, sure, this is this is hey this I had this way before cryptocurrency. Actually, you if you want to make a lot of money in cryptocurrency, uh, start with start with a lot of money and then just just keep investing <laughs> in, in, in the crazy altcoins and you'll have a little bit. Oh my God, guys, thank you so much. This has been a great episode. And for everybody out there, let me tell you something. CJ, you see week after week uh, over at Market Rebellion. Market Rebellion has their new crypto uh, trading room and app that's uh, unveiling um, uh, very soon. But go over to marketrebellion.com forward slash Bitcoin. Um, and where you can get more information, sign up for uh, some, some pre-launch stuff over there. And then, of course, we have Rob, and Rob has one of the most fantastic channels in digital assets out there. It's Digital Asset News. Uh, all his information will be down below as well. Hop over to his channel. He's like 73,000 subscribers strong, um, and they all follow him. Uh, he, he's just dishing out the bite-sized news every single day. Um, other than that, uh, let's see, I turned 45 this Saturday, so I'm getting to be a middle-aged man, I think. Um, and you will, uh, will return with Trade the Chain next Friday, uh, where I will be in London. Um, CJ, I think, will still be in Chicago. Uh, Rob never leaves Texas. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I am right here. Absolutely, in the heat, and uh, hopefully we have Ryan and Monty back as well. So uh, everyone, thank you very much, and enjoy the weekend.